And in spite of all she'd heard, Sally was quite unprepared for the sight that met her eyes as she looked out of her tent on this first morning in Paradise Camp. Everywhere she looked, happy campers went about their everyday tasks unencumbered by clothing, unembarrassed and unashamed. So this was Paradise. How beautiful it seemed to her. How unlike her past holidays in Bournemouth. Suddenly, Sally's shyness and natural timidity vanished, and forgetting all about her strict convent training, she stepped out from her tent as naked and free as nature intended. Oh. That's quite enough of that, thank you. What's the matter with you? You told us this film was all about camping. Well, it is. Those are tents, aren't they? Not what you're looking at. If you're going on a camping holiday, it only makes sense you should find out what it's all about. Well, a fact what you're going to learn from this. As a matter of fact, I'm making a mental note of all the equipment they got. Yes, especially hers. Shh! Setting out to explore Paradise, Sally's first stop was at the tennis court where four sun-bronzed campers were playing a mixed doubles. Ha, ha, ha! Oh, God, Blimey! Oh, you won't see nothing like that at Wimbledon, open or not. I tell you, if one of those men turn around, I'm walking straight out of here. What's the matter, Anne? Don't you like tennis? I feel sick. I don't blame her. Honestly, I don't know where to look. I do. <laughs> Close your eyes, Anth, and I'll tell you when to open them. I don't want to close my eyes. I just want to go. I know just how she feels. It's disgusting, that's what it is, disgusting. What are you talking about, disgusting? It's artistic. Artistic? Certainly. What, with all those big bottoms bobbling about all over the screen? Oh, you wouldn't think anything of it if we were walking around like that all the time. Free, unfettered, unashamed. Oh, no. I suppose you'd rather we sat here all stark naked. Wouldn't bother me. It would if your ice lolly fell in your lap. You know what's the matter with you? You're a prude. If you don't mind, we're trying to hear back here. Oh, sorry, mate. If I'd known that, I'd have spoken a bit louder. <laughs> <laughs> In another part of the camp, a party of carefree young people were just starting off on a bicycle ride. Hey, look, Anne. That fair girl at the end. She's got a saddle just like mine. That's what I mean by being unfettered. They don't bother with trouser clips. While in front of the canteen, a group of men were benefiting from a PT class, rhythmically bending over to touch their toes. Oh, dear. <laughs> that does it. Anthea was right. We should have gone to the sound of music. You've seen that before. I've seen all of that before, too. Shh. Oh, shut up. Come on, Anthea. Are you two coming as well? Wait a minute. Let's see the end. I've seen enough ends already, thank you. Come on, Anthea. I suppose we'd better go with them, Sid. Yeah. Excuse me. It makes you sick. You just don't appreciate culture. And so to the swimming pool, where all the prettiest young girls in the camp were disporting. <laughs>
darling. Oh, no. Hello, Peter, darling. I'm just checking on the camping gear. So I see. Have a good day. Oh, not bad. Got drunk at lunchtime, then went to a strip club, and finished up in bed with a popsy. Oh, look. There was a hole in his tent flap. Yes, the goat ate its way in last year. Oh, yes, I remember. He was after your bedding. Yes, that's right. He even left a deposit on it. <laughs> oh, poor Peter. We had a good laugh about that, though, didn't we? Yes, you did, didn't you? As I love about camping. Such fun, always. Did you have a good day? Not oh, bad. No, no. No, the chap came into the office with a pound of opium. And we smoked it, and we spent the afternoon in a harem. Oh, Peter, I've been thinking we ought to try Devon again this year. We had such a marvellous time there last time. I've been thinking too, darling. Oh, that marvellous little camping site near Stoats Hollow, do you remember? Harriet, please listen to me. I'm listening, dear. What a funny thing to say. Look, I, I've been thinking about this holiday, and I was wondering if possibly, you know, just once, we, we, we might go abroad somewhere. Abroad? Camping? Oh, nothing so luxurious as that. I thought we might we might rough it in some four-star hotel. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You wouldn't like that. Sleeping in strange beds, eating oily food, and using all those peculiar toilets. Well, the toilets we have to dig out at camp aren't exactly the last word. Oh, but they're all ours. Yeah, well, it's just that I think I may be getting too old for it. Oh, don't be silly, Peter. You mark my words, you'll die under canvas. That's what I'm afraid of. No, you always enjoy your camping holiday and you're jolly well going to have one. You're just tired. Perhaps you had a bad day at the office. No, 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 no. I, I met this chap who'd just come back from camping in Scotland and his wife was ravished by a wild haggis and now they're expecting a little faggot. Oh. Yes? We mustn't forget to take a good supply of toilet paper this time. You know what happened last year? Yes, we had nothing to write to your mother on. things. That's quite right. You see, I've been bursting to know what it's like inside a tent. I see. All right, Miss Dobbin, I'll attend to this customer. Oh, thank you, sir. Splendid girl, and so helpful. Do you know she's been showing me how to stick the pole up? Quite. I take it, sir, you're interested in purchasing equipment? Oh, rather. I've always been interested in camping. But since I've never done it before, I thought I'd go to the very best place for advice. Quite so, sir. So you came here? Well, yes, you see, the best shop was closed. I can assure you, sir, we can supply absolutely everything essential for a really successful camping holiday. Oh, but I need everything. Are you going alone, sir? Why? Do you supply that, too? This way, sir, please. Yes, of course. See, let's get back to work. Oh, oh come on. We're only going to ask them where this paradise camp is. Yeah, but they'll know it's nudist and it'll be embarrassing. What are you talking about embarrassing? Like going into a chemist shop for something, finding a young girl serving you and coming out with a tube of toothpaste. Oh, so that's it. I wonder what you were doing with all those tubes in your cupboard. No, it's not that. Besides, you'll never get Joan and Anth to go to a place like that. How long have we been taking them to out? About three months or so. Exactly. And where's it got us? I've kissed Anne. Huh? What did that lead to? She was sick. Yeah, but that's because I'd been eating pickled onions. Let's face it, we are lumbered with two birds with prohibitions. You mean inhibitions? I mean prohibitions. They just won't allow us. All the same, you can't take them to a place like that. Listen, if we can get those two birds to Paradise Camp, all that freedom, back to nature, all that guff, do you think they can keep on holding out? Never. Yeah, but how are you going to get them to go there? Don't tell them. Come on. No, hold on a minute. I can't go to a nudist place. Why not? Other people do? Maybe, but not people like us. What's the matter with us? We got three legs or something? It's not that. When I'm on holiday, I like to relax. Oh? And when I relax, I like to put my hands in my pockets. 
You can relax with your hands behind your back, can't you? Prince Philip does all right, doesn't he? Not with nothing on, he does. How do you? Look, you make it sound like it was something shameful to go into a nudist cap. I tell you, it's the most healthy, natural thing in the world. Can I help you, sir? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, my mate and I were wondering if you could... Yes? Well, we were looking for... Yes? Uh, tube of toothpaste, please. We don't sell toothpaste, sir. Aspirins? I'll take one of these, then. See? Here. That's it! That's it! <laughs> Come on. What can I do for you? I'm sorry to trouble you, Dr. Soper, but I've been thinking about this camping trip for the girls that have to remain with us during the holiday. And what about it? Well, I was wondering whether it really was such a good idea. Perhaps you're forgetting, Major, it was my idea. Oh, no. No, no, and of course it is. An absolutely splendid one. But... But what? Well, I was wondering whether perhaps they might find it a trifle spartan. I mean, they're being such delicate and refined girls. <laughs> trying to make is that here I can keep full control over them. But outside, well, anything might happen. You seem to be forgetting, Miss Haggard. You're coming with us. Surely you and I together can keep suitable control. I was thinking about the girls. So am I. Oh. But don't you see, it raises the problem of sex. Ah, sure, you matron. I wouldn't dream of bothering you in that way. And I meant with the girls. They're liable to come into contact with boys. Oh, yes, but I don't think that'll be a problem. It's been my experience that once young people sample the delights of country life and the wonders of nature, oh, they just can't get enough of it. Exactly. I was thinking of the girls. So was I. Exactly. Well, I do hope you're right, Dr. Soper. Oh, yes, yes, I assure you, Matron. But I take the point you made earlier. Yes. These girls have led very sheltered lives. They don't even know what boys are. I suggest you give them a little talk on the subject. Oh, nothing too frightening. Just stick to the birds and the bees, with a possible reference to the behavior of monkeys. Well, I'll try, Dr. Sofa. Good, good. If any of them feel any unnatural urges or the desire to do something they shouldn't, well, send them straight to me. You? Yes. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about the girls. So was I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're not wearing that. What? That hat. Oh, sorry, dear. Force of habit. <laughs> ah, that's the ticket. Come on. Let's get our packs on. And off we go. There. How do I look? Like an old mailbag filled with unwanted parcels. Splendid. Shall I drive? Why not? You always do. Good. Come on.
Now, don't forget, not a word to the girls about where we're going. It's a mystery holiday. They're bound to find out the minute we get there. Yeah, it'll be too late, buddy. We must just act as surprised as they are. I won't need to act. Sid. Yes? Well, we have to take all our clothes off. Can't we keep something on? Don't worry, I thought of that. <laughs> Finish it up. You're not going anywhere without a good breakfast inside you. I am finishing it up, Mum. More bacon and tomatoes, haven't you? Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. Fussy. I had coffee and toast before I left home. You won't get a proper lunch, not if I know those two. They're only after one clean, they are. Oh, look, for heaven's sake, Mum, I've told you we know how to look after ourselves. Oh, yes, 33 and still not married. If that's not taking care of yourself, I don't know what is. I'm playing hard to get with, Sid. <coughs> What's the matter with you? I choked. Well, save me the trouble. <laughs> Honestly, Mum, the way you talk, anyone would think I didn't want to get married. I know what you want. I also know what Sid wants. What's that? Since you asked me to put it into words, he wants to eat his cake and have it. And he's certainly going the right way about it, taking you off on a camping holiday. Look, Mum, I know Sid's been around, but he's not going to find me easy meat. Me neither. Well, you're not even meat. Bernie's nice, though. He is if you get him away from that Sid. He's a bad influence on him, if you ask me. We aren't. Well, I think you're making it too easy for him going camping. Look, Mum, I wish you wouldn't treat Sid as if you hated his guts. But I do. That's just it, I do. I know. And you're not making it any easier for me, either. It's all going to be quite proper and above board, I can assure you. Sid's got two tents for us. Yes, and I know what happens to people once they get in them. I went with your father once and he went berserk. I tell you, after that experience, I'd never have married him. If I hadn't had to. Oh, do shut up, Mum. Oh, here they are. Hello, all set? Yeah, give us a hand with the luggage, right. will you? Earth, you get here all right? Yes, yeah, she's just finished breakfast. Good morning, Mrs. Fussy. Mm. Hello. Hello. Oh, blimey, we're not emigrating, you know. Well, it's only clothes. Oh, you won't need clothes where we're going. What do you mean, we won't need clothes? It means you won't need a lot of clothes. You know, just a pair of shorts, swimsuit. Oh, no, I'm not having a go without plenty of woolies. Not with her funny kidneys. Oh, do stop that, Mum. There's nothing wrong with my kidneys. You know perfectly well a chill goes straight to them, just like your father. Always on the trot, he was. Oh, give over, for heaven's sake. They can run around half-naked if they want, but you're keeping woolies next to your essentials, and that's final. All right, all right, Mrs Fussy. We'll get it all on somehow. I'm sorry if I've brought too much, Bernie, but I have to keep covered up in the sun. That's right. Anthea's got a funny skin. Get away. Her funny skin and Joan's funny kidneys has got to be a bleeding hilarious holiday. If she can't take her clothes off in the sun... Shut up, what's shut up, shut up! And don't go drinking none of that well water. You never know what people have done down wells. Yes, all right, Mum. And go easy on the tin food. You don't want any of that trouble. Not with your funny tummy. Funny tummy, too. You ought to be on the telly. She can't help having sensitive parts. Oh, look, for goodness sake, can't we get going? Nearly ready. You get in. You're all right, Auntie. Have you taken your tablet? Uh, yes. Tablet? Yes, Auntie gets car sick. What, a big, strong, healthy girl like her? Never. Come on, eh? And don't forget, if you have to use any strange watsits, put plenty of paper down first. Oh, isn't it awful? Come on, come on, Bernie. Let's get cracking. That should all be all right. Yeah, that's it. Well, tell her, Mrs. Fuzzy. Just a minute. Yes? I just wanted to warn you. I don't want to hear of any unnecessariness when my Joan gets back. Unnecessariness? You know what I mean. What makes you think that's unnecessary? <laughs> it's no laughing matter. They might think your intentions are honourable, but personally, i got sore misgivings. You want to put some talcum powder on them. <laughs> Very funny. But you stick to your own tents, that's all. Oh, Mum, really? It's not as if she'd got a ring on her finger, you know. She hasn't got one through her nose, either. <laughs> oh, come on, let's get going. <laughs> Oh, my God. There's three large tents for the girls. One for me, one for Miss Haggard, and bunks and bedding. All the bunks and bedding in here. Get a load of that. Whoa! <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Sofa. Are we all loaded? Not half. <laughs> oh, is that our driver? Yes, Mr. Tanner. You can call me Jim. Hello, Jim. Are you going to stay with us all the time? Oh, yeah. 
I'll go all the way. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> that'll do, that'll do. All right, girls, get in the coach and we'll get on with the loading. Barbara, dear, do you think you're quite suitably dressed for travelling? Oh, but, sir, we were told to bring the minimum of clothing. Yes, but in your luggage, not on your person. Oh, it's all right. I've got a minimum in my luggage, too. Yeah. So I see, but I don't think it's proper for a young lady to show her legs to that extent. What extent? They go up too far. My legs? Oh, they only go up to me. To your shorts. Oh, yes. <laughs> drive, eh? Yes, fascinating, the way it... Uh, what? Absolutely disgusting. I can't think what Matron had in mind when she allowed it. I shall certainly speak to her when... Good morning, Dr. Sofar. Miss Harrod, I really must protect... Something wrong, Dr. Sofar? Uh, no, Matron, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. If you ask me, you should never have had those bacon and tomatoes for breakfast. Oh. Oh, look, now you've done it. Me? What have I done? Why'd you have to bring up bacon and tomatoes again? Why didn't she do? Oh, dear. I'm not stopping again. Now, look, don't be so hard that she can't help feeling sick. She's always like this on long distances. Long distances? She was off before we reached the end of your road. <laughs> you better do something quick. Paper bag, that's the answer. Yeah, I know what you can do with it. Yeah. Put it over her head. Try those. She'll never get it in that. It's to sniff at you, fool. Smelling salts. Quick! <laughs> <laughs> oh, great smelling salts. Uh, what is it? Essence of bacon and tomato. <laughs> oh, look, Sid, it's no good. We'll have to find a place. We're in the middle of the blooming country. There aren't any places. Well, she'll have to go behind a hedge. Stop the car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I say, look what's in front of you. <laughs> I am looking. <laughs> what a ghastly sight. You can say that again. Keep off the road. Keep off the road. Why, what have you done, madam? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I wonder if you could help me. Am I on the right road to Salisbury? Yes, but it's quicker if you go through the fence the and across the pier. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, what's a nice girl like you doing with an old cow? I'm taking her to the bull. To the bull? Oh. Couldn't your father do that? No, it has to be the bull. It has to be the bull. All right, now pay attention, girls. Owing to our rather prolonged stay at Stonehenge, I have arranged for us to stay the night at a hostel and then go on to the campsite tomorrow morning. Any questions? Go on, perhaps, I dare you. Uh, uh, yes, please, Dr. Sofa. What is it, Barbara, dear? Please, sir, at Stonehenge, I heard an American gentleman say that all those stones were to do with fertility rights. What are they? Ah, uh, fertility rights, yes. Well, that's easily explained, my dear. You see, in those days, uh, there were very few cattle and horses about, and men had to purchase the right to gather the fertilizer. <laughs> Hence the term, the fertility rights. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Aren't I silly? I thought it was something to do with having babies. <laughs> the rest period. A fine talk you must have given them on the birds and the bees. Well, I'm sorry, Doctor, but when I started talking about them, I suddenly realized I hadn't the foggiest idea what they did. Well, what do they do? These stinks. We'll have a quick nosh up, then we'll get the tent up. I think this is a lousy spot to pick. Perfect, isn't it? Just smell that air. Ah! Something up. Oh, just, just a thistle, that's all. <laughs> oh, poor Peter, you're always in trouble. Here, have a hard-boiled egg to get on with. <laughs> oh, isn't this wonderful? So much better than dirty, stuffy old London. Funny thing about dirty, stuffy old London. 
I can walk for miles and miles without ever getting bitten, stung, or stepping into something. That's more than I can say with the country. <laughs> what was that? Only a cow. Look, it's over there. Are you absolutely sure that's a cow? Of course I'm sure. I should know. I used to milk them when I was little. Well, I wouldn't try milking that one. It's only got one tap. Oh, yes. I believe that is a bull. <laughs> Fancy that. No, I don't. Not in the least. Don't have to worry about them. They only go for something red. <coughs> Perhaps you better move. I'll open the gate. You bring the things. Come on. Uh. Peter, darling, are you all right? Fine, fine. Would you pass the salt, please? Peter, Peter! <laughs> Five. It's nearly six. I was reckoning without your friend, Miss Throwup, 1969. According to the map, we should be quite close to it. Close to what? Where are we heading for? But I... Joan! Coming! You, I shouldn't have eaten those radishes. <laughs> I say, Peter, <laughs> do you remember we stayed overnight in this spot before? When I got bitten in the middle of the night. That's right. By mosquito, wasn't it? Well, it wasn't you. They always seem to fancy you. What you need is a repellent. Thanks. I've married one. We could do with some milk. There's a farm round here where we got some before. Well, I got some before. No, I'm wrong. I remember you went by yourself, and on the way back, you fell into a silage pit. <laughs> oh, we have had some fun, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. I'll get the milk. Spot of bother with my tent, and I wondered whether you could let me have a room for the night. Oh, did you? Now, I suppose you want me to say yes, but you'll have to share it with my daughter, <laughs> eh? <laughs> I expect you've heard that one about the traveller who stopped at the. I've not house. only heard it, I've had it. Come in here. Oh. Here, girl. Is this the one who's is responsible? What, that? You must be joking. <laughs> Here, have you ever been with my daughter before? Actually, no. Uh, but if the office still holds... Never mind. Just get out and don't come back. Oh, all right. I'm sorry to have knocked you up. Here, is that meant to be funny? No, why? Because it was a passing tramp like you that got her into trouble. Oh, you don't say. Nothing serious, I hope. <laughs> get out! Get out unless you want my throat board up your backside! Father, you can't go on attacking every man that comes here. Yeah. Just give me his name. That's all I want out of you, his name. I can't. I never knew his name. All that money I spent on a posh education trying to make a lady out of you, and you haven't even got the manners to ask, with who am I having the pleasure? <laughs> Good evening, sir. I was wondering if I could have some milk. Milk, is it? Yes. I came here once before, you know. Oh, you did, eh? Yes. But you weren't here, though. Just a young lady. And she gave me a bit. Oh, she did, did she? Yes. And it was very nice, too. That's why I've come back for some more. By gum, you've got a nerve. Oh, don't misunderstand me, please. I, 
I'm quite willing to pay for it this time. I'll, I'll kill you! <laughs> Peter, what's the matter with you? Nothing. I've been shot in the backside, that's all. You... Uh, what? Shot. Where? In the backside. Much. Here, have a look, will you? <laughs> Must be around here somewhere. Oh, look, for heaven's sake, why don't we just stop anywhere and put the tents up? You can't just stop anywhere. You've got to have proper facilities. Well, we've managed without facilities all day, haven't we? How's Queasy Chops? Oh, she's having a whale of a time. You've only to look at her to see that. He only asked. Look! That's it. Paradise? Where have I heard that before? Must have been in church. No, it wasn't that. Oh, is this the special place you've been looking for? That's right. No, no, nothing special. But we'll uh, try it if you like. But see, this is the place we've got. Bernie, don't be so selfish, Bernie. Think of the poor girls. We've never had enough for one day. We'll take a chance, shall we? This side? No. Where is he? Gone for a pee. Oh. Here he comes now. Excuse me. Oh. Yes. Can I help you? Yes, we'd like to camp here. Who do we have to see? Me. I'm the owner, Josh Fiddler. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Fiddler? Yeah. I'm Boggle. This is Mr. Lug. Hello. You're not members then? Do you have to be members? Oh, I'm afraid so. I'm trying to keep this place select, you know. It's not like some of these campsites. It's more what you might call a show place. <laughs> we know all about that, don't we? How much is it to be a member, then? Pound. Pound? You all right, then? Per person. Each? But there's four of us. Bernie, it's all right, Bernie. We don't want to argue with Mr Fiddler. Two, Two. three, four. That's correct. <laughs> now then, gentlemen. Your members' cards. Thank you. Right, shall we go then? Yes, any time you want to book in here, just show them. But we want to come in now. Now? Yes. But you haven't booked, have you? Booked? Don't tell me you're full up. Well, I might be able to squeeze you in, but uh, you should have paid the booking fee. Booking fee? Which is? A pound. A pound. A tent. Two tents, two pounds. Now, can we come in? Certainly. As soon as you paid the rent. Rent in advance. But you've had six quid out of us already. Bernie, it's all right, Bernie. What about the rent, then, Mr. Fiddler? Well, my usual charge per week. Yes, yes, which is? Pound. Yeah, I know it. Per tent? Or per person, whichever's the greater. <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever told you, but your name certainly suits you. Thank you. Now can we come? Well, there is just one more thing. What? Welcome to paradise. <laughs> Bernie, well in. Do we strip off now? Eh? Do we take our clothes off now? No, oh, no, there's no hurry for that. I mean, let's, uh, let's have a good look around first, see what the form is. Yeah, but if they're all stripped off and we go in fully dressed, everybody's going to stare at us. can't start now. They'll get suspicious. We're lucky. We managed to get in. Then you can just turn round and manage to get out again. What are you talking about? You heard me, you filthy beast. Filthy beast? What have I done now? Look, don't you come the innocent with me, Sid Boggle. It's a good job Anthea woke up. She remembers Paradise, all right. It was in that disgusting film you took us to see. Oh, is that what that camp was called? <laughs> it's a coincidence, eh, Ben? Well, yeah. <laughs> I want to go home. <coughs> don't worry, dear, we're going. We're not staying here to flaunt our persons in public. It has cost us ten naked to get in here, and in we are going. Don't look, Anthea. <laughs> Oh, 
it's all right, Auntie. You can look. It's really rather nice. Oh, yes, it's lovely. Oh, come on, then. Let's get out and put the tents up, shall we? You stay right where you are. We're not stopping in this lousy dump. What? Is this it, then? Oh, yes. Lucian's hut, toilet hut, camp shop. Doesn't seem very full, does it? Oh, well, you're lucky, you see. I had a couple of cancellations. That's why I was able to squeeze you in. Well, before you start squeezing, why are these people all sitting around with their clothes on? Well, it's a camp rule. All visitors will be respectfully dressed at all times. At all times? Well, of course. I can't have people walking around here naked. I've got my hens to think of. Doesn't take much to put them off their lane. And it doesn't take much to put me off mine. I'm very sorry, Mr. Philip. We've come to the wrong place. We can't stay here. Ah, oh, please yourself. Right, so if you just give me the money. Money? Oh, I'm very sorry. It's a camp rule. No money's returnable. Yeah, but if you don't give me that money, I'll clobber you. Sid, what's all the fuss? Uh, nothing, nothing. I was just telling Mr. Philip here that you girls don't want to stay here. Oh, that was before we saw it. It's lovely, isn't it, Anthea? Yes, lovely. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Yes, yeah, lovely. Too long putting your tents up if I were you. Wouldn't surprise me if we didn't have a drop of rain. You had to open your big mouth. Oh. You two get in the car, and me and Sid will put them up. Hurry up, girls. Come along now. Pick up your luggage. Well, here we are, girls. Welcome to Ballsworth Youth Hostel, Corridor E, rooms 15 to 22. All the girls will have to share. Oh, not you, of course, Matron. You'll be in room 19. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Silver. Not at all. I'm sure no one will disturb you. <laughs> yes, come along, girls. Hurry up. Now, all paired off. Each girl make a pair. All make a pair. <laughs> That's right. What's the matter, Sally? Please, sir, I don't seem to have a pair. I wouldn't say that, dear. You see, there's 11 of us. Oh, yes, that's true. I hadn't thought of that. That is most awkward. Oh, she can have my room. I beg your pardon? Well, I'm on my own. She can have it if she wants. Oh, yes, I suppose that would appear to be the only solution. All right, Sally, you take room 17. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's all right. Any time. It's all right. Come along, dear. You'll be sharing with me room 16. Oh. 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 Mind where you're putting that. Give me a peg. Hey. Yeah. All right, bring it in. Oh. 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 Stop messing with you. Poor thing, you're soaked. Yes. It's been raining, you see. Come inside. Oh. Come inside. Come on, quickly. Come on, Peter, move on. Hello. <laughs> Feeling better? Yes, thank you. Here, get those things off. Oh, yes. Come on, Peter, give the poor old chap a hand. Will you? Yes, if you could just get the pack off. Nearly off. No, wait a minute. That side. That side now. That's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Just get... Oh, you're all wet. Oh, don't worry about that. Peter doesn't mind a drop of water. <laughs> no, I love it. Oh, by the way, I'm Harriet Potter, and this is my husband, Peter. How do you do? How do you do? My name is Muggins. Charlie Muggins. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. 
I lost my tent, you see, and I've been searching around looking for somewhere to spend the night. Oh, dear. You're miles from anywhere here. Yes. Why not stay the night here? May I? Yes. No. Well, I mean, that is, I mean, Mr. Muggins hardly knows us. I mean, we don't want to embarrass him. Well, you're not shy, are you? No. Well, of course you're not. After all, with us, it's just down to the old undies and into the bag, isn't it, Peter? Yeah, well, perhaps Mr. Muggins doesn't like watching people getting stripped down to their old undies and getting into their bags. Oh, I don't mind. That is, if you and your husband don't wish to be alone. What on earth for? Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Oh, we gave up all that sort of thing years ago, didn't we, Peter? Yes, you did, didn't you? <clears throat> I still have my little cot with me, if you're sure there's room for it. Yes, of course. Put it up the middle. Peter will give you a hand to get it out, won't you, dear? Oh, gladly. That's it. Now, pull! Pull. Oh. Nearly finished. Well, you said that nearly an hour ago. That's it, Bernie. Get the beds. Right up. Accidentally pulled it off. Well, I'm quite sure Barbara's big enough to put it back on herself. Oh, yeah, she's uh, big enough, all right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, oh, good night. You two get to bed. I'll deal with you in the morning. I'll fix the old bag someday. Give us a hand. Back to room 16. And don't hog the bed. Dr. Soap is coming. Yeah, I've got an idea. Come Off to bed, if I now, girls. Get a good night's sleep. Yes, Dr. Soap, and the same to you. Thank you. Good night. Oh! 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 Matron, this is the men's. Go away, Dr. Soap. I'm sorry. Oh! No, Matron, I assure you the mistake is yours. It's quite clearly marked. Oh. Oh, I... Dr. Silk, I must confess I'm not an expert in these matters, but I hardly think a shower stall is a suitable place for making advances. I thought I could heard of the shower tap. I mean... Oh! But, Matron, I... Come on, girls, everything's ready for you. Lovely and cosy, isn't it, Auntie? Lovely. Worth waiting for, wasn't it? Bed's all made up. There's a light and hangers for your clothes. That's in case you want to go out. <coughs> and that's in case you don't. Well, you have done it nice and there's so much room. Yes. You think you get four in there easy? If you like to. Yes, well, let's put up the other tent. Oh, look, do you have to? I mean, you're soaking wet already and it started to rain again. Well, we've got to keep somewhere, haven't we? Yes, I suppose so. What's a drop of pleurisy, anyway? Good night. Good night, Bernie. Hey, wait! Look, I've had an idea. Yes? Well, it seems silly to get wet through again putting up the other tent. That's exactly what we thought. So? So, why don't you both sleep in the car? <laughs> Would you, would you please stop barging? I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my sock off and I can't find the top. I'm afraid that's my leg, Mr. Muggins. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my fault. That's too close. <laughs> would you, would you, would you, would would you mind, please? Well, sorry, I could. Oh, that's so difficult. Would you mind? It'll be much better when I 
I'll get my pants off. Mrs. Potter, hmm? you're getting mine off. Oh, good heavens, I'm terribly sorry. Heavens, no, terribly no, sorry. so little room in here. Yes. Give me a go. Oh, oh, oh thank hey. Hey. Oh, just a minute. Oh, oh you keep pushing. Would you, why, would you, you please, would you please get out of my pajama? I can't move. Hey, Potter, hey, Mr. don't Maggie, try to tell you. Oh, she's not in. You know all oh, what's happened. Oh, Mr. 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 Muggins, please. You oh, made Muggins. a mistake. No, it's, please. No, I know you didn't, really. It's terrible fun. No, no, you know, look, it keep was it a silly. Yes, of course. I've got my own, you Thank see. You very much. Oh, there you are. That's not the other bed, that's the rubber dinghy. Aye? Real bargain, that was. Self inflating and all. What do we want a self inflating rubber dinghy for? We'll need it when we get to the beach. If we get much more of this rain, we'll need it here. Get your sopping clothes off my bed. Get up. Sorry. Evening. Well done. Oh. That's fine. <laughs> You'll be all right there, Mr. Muggins. Thank you. I only hope I didn't disturb you too much. Oh, no, not at all. Oh. Well, good night, all. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Potter. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I think you better have my cot. I'll sleep in the middle. All right. <laughs> um, um, you've got my sleeping bag. You are kind. <laughs> It's raining. Hang on a minute. Thank you. Uh, for God's sake, let's get some sleep. I'm ready. What about the light? Oh, OK. Coach is waiting. Sorry we busted in on you like that last night, sir. 
hope we didn't ruin things for you. <laughs> Not at all. It was just a misunderstanding over the room numbers, you understand. Of course, sir. I wonder how it could have happened. The doors were all marked so clearly, sir. Yes, well, no harm done. I was only in there for a bit. Of course, sir. No harm in a bit now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, good morning, Matron. I was just explaining to the girls about last night. Oh, please don't say anything more. I fear I owe you an apology. Oh, not at all, Matron. You won't know I was in the wrong oh, room. Oh, no, please. I have been thinking about it. I should never have screamed out like that. It was most immature of me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what? You see, I've always led a very sheltered life. And before this, no man has ever tried to force his attentions on me. I can well believe it. It's all the same. But I'm... I am not a child. I am aware that a man has his uncontrollable urges from time to time. Oh, only at Christmas and bank holidays. I it's should really close. feel very flattered that you would want to release them on me. Oh, but I don't, Matron, I assure you. Oh, I realise, of course, it was the sight of me in the shower that aroused your slumbering manhood. Oh, but it wasn't slumbering. It was only half an No, hour. please don't say any more. Just be patient with me. Remember, I am inexperienced in such things. Just don't rush me. I think you'll find it's worth waiting for. Yeah, so it's Christmas, but you won't find me stuffing your turkey. <laughs> Well, if this is paradise, give me hell. Oh, look, I will if you don't stop moaning. Well, what have I got to be cheerful about? Well, I thought we might book up and come again next year. Over my dead body. Well, to tell you the truth, me and Anthea, we were a bit worried, weren't we, Anthea? Yes. Worried? What about? <laughs> oh, it's silly, I know, but, well, you know, we thought all sort of coming camping together. <laughs> you two boys might have tried it on. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Sid and me thought that, didn't we? Did we? How do you do? Know? Hello, Mr. Fiddler. What's this, then? Caught coals, have you? No, no, no. Just giving our feet some air, that's all. You've uh, settled in all right, then, haven't you? Yes, very nicely, thank you. Look, you didn't say nothing about putting up a clothesline. Oh, uh, d uh, don't you allow them, then? It's just that it takes up so much space. That's why we have to make a small charge. Small charge? Ah, oh, now, look, just a nominal one, mind. Pound? <laughs> Oh, no, you can put four out for a pound. Get away. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you will let us put up one clothesline occupying at least ten feet of empty air for only five shillings? Ah, oh, no. One, seven and six. Four for a pound. You skimpling. You scavenger. Don't worry. We'll come to some arrangement about the line. Yes, round your blooming neck. Sid, you must not talk to him like Quietly that. Why get on my wick? Army, mean, ten quid we spent here. Anybody think the blooming field belonged to him? Sid, my stew! Ah! Yeah, that's it. Pack up. Pack up. We're getting out of this joint right now. Come on, get this stuff out. I say, thanks most awfully for the lift. Well, that's all right. Come along, girls. Get to bed. This way. Right. Such charming company, too. I say. Could I give something towards the petrol? Well, you could give something for all the food. Oh, but I'd be delighted. Thank you. Don't mention it. Hey, I'll sit. Jones says to put some of this ointment on your poor feet. Never mind about my poor feet. Get them tents down. Let's get out of here. Right on. Look at that! What? I don't think much of yours, Sid. Oh, I don't know. If you've got lovely big blue eyes, you can have the one in the blazer. Well? Well, what? Well, are we leaving or not? Leaving? What, a lovely cheap place like this? I don't call ten quid cheap. Oh, shut up. Leaving, you must be balmy. The friends are first, and then canvas later. And there's bedding and bunks by the coat. No, no, Barbara. Tent up first. Bunk up later. Ah, oh, that's it, girls. Very good. You see, frames first and then canvas over later. Oh, excellent. Well done, Mason. Uh, well, it seems a little bit rickety, Doctor. Is it? Yes, well, of course, it's fairly easy to get it up. It's getting it to stay up. That's what kinds. Oh, of course, you haven't pegged it down properly. Oh, of course. You must forgive me, Doctor. I, I've never done it before. Yeah, so you told me earlier. 
excuse me. Oh, Doctor, I suppose you haven't room for me. Room for you? Yes, well, you see, I happen to have lost my tent. My dear man, these tents are all for young girls. Oh, well, I'm not fussy. Well, I am. Oh. Well, what about the little one at the far end? That, sir, is my habitat. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Do you know I thought that you and she? <laughs> Certainly not. Oh, well, in that case, I don't mind sharing with her. Well, you're certainly not fussy. <laughs> Here we are again, Mr. Fiddler. <laughs> Welcome back, Mrs. Potter. Mr. Potter. <laughs> oh, thank you. Did you get our booking? Ah, oh, yes, now, about that, Mrs. Potter. Uh, got a bit of a shock. You mean there's no rooms? Oh, no, I can always manage to squeeze old customers in, all right. Oh. It's just that overheads have gone up so much since you were here last. I've had to. How much more this year, Mr. Fiddler? Pound. Oh, we quite understand. You might, I don't. Just what overheads do you have, Mr. Fiddler? It's only a field? To you, Mr. Potter, maybe. Take that grass. Don't grow by itself, you know. Has to be manured regular. And manure's gone up by ten pound a load now. Sounds a real bargain to me, Mr. Fiddler. What is it, second hand? Mrs. Potter, hello. Mrs. Potter, I'm coming. Oh, look, darling, look, it's Mr. Muggins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, your problems are solved, Mr. Fiddler. At least you won't have to buy any more manure. Supper's ready. Good, I'm starving. Where are the boys? It's awfully sweet of you to help us like this. Oh, it's nothing. It's a pleasure, isn't it, Ben? Oh, yeah. Especially when you're as well equipped as you are. <laughs> oh, thanks for the compliment. No, I meant with camping equipment. Don't spoil it. <laughs> you two here on your own? Oh, no. We've got our girlfriend. <coughs> Ow! Sorry. Were you going to say you got girlfriends with you? No, we always call them that. They're relations, actually. Aunties. Oh. Well, then they won't mind you being with us, will they? <laughs> Mine? <laughs> That'd be tickled pink. <laughs> Now, remember, girls, the camp perimeter lights go out at 10 o'clock, and I don't want to see any of you outside your tents after that. There'll be the usual PT at 7.30, followed by breakfast at 8, and then I'll be taking you all on a lovely nature ramble. Lunch at 1 o'clock, and then I'll be giving a lecture on bird song and the calls of nature. <laughs> all right, I'll show you once again. Are you watching? Oh, yeah. All right, here we go now. Now you see it, now you don't. <laughs> uh, that's wrong again. I three kisses you, Alma. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, um, uh, these two gentlemen have been kindly helping us with our tent, sir. Well, that's very nice, I'm sure, but you mustn't let them take advantage of you. Oh, no, we'll try not to, sir. I'm talking to the gentlemen. Oh, you don't want to worry about us, mate. We're only too happy to be of assistance. Yeah. Very kind of you, I'm sure. But I'd like to see you get everything organized inside the tent. That suits us. <laughs> I was talking to the girls. Bunks and bedding. Oh, yes, well, Jane's just gone to get her, sir. But it's high time you got yours. And I was talking to the girls. Come on, Fanny, we'd better get cracking. Wait a minute, darling, you don't want to take that. Too heavy for you. You might do yourself an injury. That's all right, I can manage. <laughs> can you go and get some more for the others? Doing in here? Just come to give you a couple of hands, that's yeah. all. If Dr. Sofa sees you here, we'll get into awful trouble. We've just got to make sure he doesn't see us, haven't we? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh. Well, it must go together somehow. Well, hurry up, for heaven's sake, before someone comes. Perhaps you have to pull something. How about those two things sticking out in front? Yes, how about them? <laughs> oh, saucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, how much longer are you going to be? Sorry, but it's not going to work like this. We'll have to try it the other way around. Oh, come on. Stop messing around, you two. Give us a bit. Let me and Bab show you out. What do you want me to do? Yeah, well, do this. <laughs> no, both hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's all right. It's only your aunties. <laughs>
Close your eyes. <laughs> Stop laughing. Now that Barbara's fallen out. <laughs> Stop laughing. We will continue. Hands on hips, bending from side to side. Begin. Bend, 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 bend. That's enough for today. Now, after you've all had a shower and breakfast, you'll be pleased to hear I've been able to arrange a lovely outing for you all to the famous mineral drink-producing monastery at Standfast, where you can actually see the monks making their own water. Dismiss. Oh, you're up already, dear. You ready for some breakfast? I am. Did you have a good night? Oh, not bad. One of the girls from across the way came over and dragged me out of the tent and took me into the woods. Afraid it's only eggs this morning. Mr. Muggins finished all the bacon last night. How surprising. Did you sleep well, dear? Not very, no. See, this girl kept waking me up to make love to her. Oh, poor Mr. Muggins. You know, he does need feeding up. Hurry on! What's the matter, dear? Don't you think it's time Mr. Muggins got another tent to himself? Oh, darling, we couldn't chuck him out like that. He, he's so helpless. You mean hopeless? <laughs> You're just a bit grumpy this morning. Perhaps you had a bad night. No, not really. No. Mind you, it got a bit rough when all the rest of the girls came across and joined us. I just couldn't satisfy them. You know, I wouldn't have minded a bit of that myself. We do what? That bacon. Pity he finished it. Frustrated. What do you mean, you feel frustrated? What did Fiddler say to you yesterday when you asked him for some eggs? He said he was not getting any. Exactly. Six days we've been here now, and those birds are dead ready to be friendly. Oh, they're friendly, all right. Mr. Fiddler says they're just not laying. Not the blooming chickens. I mean, Babs and the other. Fanny? Yeah, that's it. Maybe if we could get a hold of them. Yes, but how? How? With those four beady eyes watching us. Morning. Howdy, girls. No dawdling. <laughs> See that? They give us a little wave. Yeah, that lot of good little, do you? Pity we don't share the same ablutions. Yeah. Get your wash things. I had a wash yesterday. So you'll have another wash today. But I'm on holiday. Oh, come on, Jack. Oh. This way, girls. But you said I was going to have enough. What are you up to? Well, they can't stop us talking to them through the wall, can they? Hey, hurry up, Barbara. Oh, just a minute. I've only just got in here. I can hear it. Just the other side of the wall. Who? Babs, I think. Hey, look! Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. You break out in boils. Uh, it's Babs. I recognize the dimples. Hey, Babs! It's me, Sid Foggle. Can you hear me? Only just. You'll have to speak up a bit. I was wondering if we could meet up somewhere tonight. Meet where? Hello? 
Sit, watch it. She's worried. Well, what about this time? Oh, the usual. I had a nasty dream last night about you and Anthea. You were asleep in your tent, and these two big, lusty farmhands broke in and cultivated your friendship. Mm. Chance would be a fine thing. Anthea! Oh, I'm sorry. Just sort of slipped out. having a permanent itch and nothing to scratch it with. Do you really think they fancy us? Fancy us? Your trouble is you don't recognise a green light when you see it. I haven't had much luck with the red ones either. Where do you think you're going? For a walk. On tiptoe? I, I didn't want to wake you. Now look, don't you kid me, Sid Boggle. You're eyeing those two flashy birds. What two flashy birds? She means Babs and Fanny. Who asked you? I was only trying to help. Didn't even notice them. Rubbish. You haven't stopped eyeing them ever since they came here. Can I help it if they're always standing where I'm staring? Look, not content with having bags under your eyes, you've got to have them in front of you as well. Lovely afternoon. Hello, Mrs. Potter. Yes, lovely. I thought you ought to know that this evening, Dr. Soper is giving us a lecture on bird watching. <laughs> Thanks. I've already had one. Don't take any notice of him, Mrs. Potter. We'll be there. Uh, good o. Uh, seven o'clock in front of the latrines. That should be a good atmosphere for it. I say, you haven't seen my, uh, my husband, have you? Afraid not. Extraordinary thing. He seems to have disappeared. He's a good judge. Come along, girls. Quickly now. Come on. Right. And remember, girls, don't go asking the monks at the monastery any stupid questions because they've given up talking. And none of your saucy looks because they've given that up, too. Right. Are we all ready to go? Yes, Dr. Sober. All except Jay. She wasn't feeling very well, so I sold her to stay in bed. Oh, yeah. What have you done to your eyes? There are, yeah. I got a fly in it. <laughs> There goes Dr. Super's party now. <laughs> I say, have you visited Stanfast Abbey? I uh, know. Oh, you should, you know. Most extraordinary order of monks. <laughs> well, in that case, I'd rather not. Oh, well, I better find the old pot and pan. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> She's uh, quite right, you know. We ought to see everything there is to see. You weren't doing so badly this morning in the ablutions hut. Oh, what are you talking about? No. All right, get your things. Let's go. <laughs> No, thank you. All right, then, Bernie, you and me will go. Where to? That place, uh, Stanfast Abbey. Oh, you mean where the girls have gone? All right. Get your things, Anne. Mm. 
Mr. Nuggins. Much as I enjoy your excellent company, that's a blasted lie from a start. I must be completely honest, only polite. Huh. My dear Mr. Muggins, it's only a suggestion, but why don't you take your stinking carcass out of our bloody tent? If only I had a nerve. Hello. Oh, hello. You're from the camping site, aren't you? Mm. I've seen you with that funny woman and that scrawny little man. I don't like them much. Sit down and join the club. All right. I like you, though. <laughs> Having fun? No much. Oh, would you like some? No, I don't drink. Pity. Oh, cigarette. I don't smoke. Oh. But we can go to my tent if you like. <coughs> the others are all away. Well, come on then. one of the monks doing their laundry. Oh, lovely. I suppose that's where they get rid of their dirty habit. That is not very funny, Bernie. Has Sid got a... Where is he? Where's Sid? Oh, he's just crept into the crypt for... smoke. How about a bit of fun tonight? Oh, not half, brother. We'll be over after lights out. Bless you, my children. <laughs> Oh, there you are. Where have you been all afternoon? I have been lying in the arms of a beautiful girl. I was getting worried about you. You missed your tea, you know. Hurry up! Still, you're in time for supper. Hurry up! What is it, dear? Where is Mr. Muggins? Oh, he's in the tent. Oh, Peter, don't go in. He's having a nap. <laughs> Peter, what's come over you? Now, Harriet, I'd like you inside, please. What for? You'll find out. Oh. But what about the sup? Oh. So glad you reminded me. I wonder if he's offended about something. I keep telling you, Bernie, as soon as the lights go out, they're coming in here. Go on. What for? A party. Or well, shouldn't we get some cakes? Not that kind of a party, Bernie. We have got it made. All we've got to do is play our cards right. Oh. I hope they play rummy. Forget it. Just hide the bottles. Supposing Joan and Anthea find out. They'll be asleep by then. Yeah, but what if they hear a noise and get up to investigate? I thought of that. A needle and thread? That's it. As soon as it gets dark, we nip out, sew their tent flaps together. Matter. Oh, I can't come out now. I'll see you in the morning. Very well. If you won't come out, I'll come in. Hello? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, no, no, a matron. I, I was just taking a shortcut. I don't know why, Doctor, but I have a feeling you're trying to avoid me. Oh, no, whatever gave you that idea? But you shouldn't be in here, you know. Think of the girls. They need watching. Oh, to hell with the girls. To hell with the girls. Matron. I can't help it. It's not fair to ignore a woman after you've aroused her dormant passion. Well, I've not aroused your dormant passion. Uh, your dormant passion. <laughs> oh, but you have. All my life I've been like an unused clockwork toy. And then that night at the hostel you wound me up. Now you must stop me. Oh, I couldn't. I might bust your spring. What time is it now, Sid? Oh, blimey, it's only eight o'clock. Will you relax? Eight o'clock? Another two hours to wait. I'll be worn out by the time they get here. Oh! You don't know how empty my life has been. Before I came to your school, I was matron at a hospital. There was a doctor there. He was brilliant. He looked just like you. I worshipped him, but he ignored it. Why, whenever I show any interest in a man, do they ignore it? Why? Haven't I got appeal? Yes, but so's a banana, and I don't even want that. But I feel you're different, Doctor. Don't you feel something? No, I believe in keeping my hands to myself. But that night in the hostel, you showed me your true feelings. Now I beg you, let me show you mine. But I don't want to see yours. Don't fight you! Oh, help! Someone help! I don't know, but thank heavens for it. It's in the next field. and it seems he'd given permission for to use it. But we can't stand that row all night. Certainly. How are we going to get any sleep? From what I hear, you wasn't reckoning on doing much sleeping. <laughs> the point is, what are we going to do about it? I can't have my wife upset by that damn noise. You think she's upset? You should see what it's done to my hands. Couldn't care less about them. Never mind your blooming hands. Look, just a minute, everybody, just a minute. If you really want to get rid of them, I think I know how we can do it. The girls are all back now, Doctor. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm all right. I'm just a bit shaken up, that's all. Come on.
going. Hey, Bernie, we can get on with that party of ours now. That'll teach him. I wish the girls could see this now, Matron. The girls are in their truck. Stop! Stop, I say! Hey, they're taking all the girls. Well, all of them? Every flaming one. Quickly, Matron, let's go after them. Peter, look, they've stolen our tandem. Come back, I say! Stop! I report you to the board! Stop! Do you hear? Good. What? We won't need it when we go to Monte Carlo next year. Monte Carlo? That's right. We'll go on the cross-channel ferry with all the camping equipment. Uh oh quite a good idea. And when we're halfway across, we'll dump the whole damn lot over the side. Oh, Peter! Anything you say, darling. <laughs> oh, well, here goes our party. What party? Oh, Babs and Fanny were coming over to our tent and we... Big mouth. Well, I don't know what you're bothering with them for when you've got us. You mean, you, you let me... Unless, of course, we don't appeal to you in that way. <laughs> Let's go to your tent. <laughs> Come on. You're not going to be sick again, are you? Only if you stop that. Chloe! Chloe! Oh, no! Oh, my God. Ah, oh, thanks. I've been so worried about you, I thought I'd better come and keep an eye on things. Very thoughtful. Hello, Mother. Well, aren't you going to ask me in? Look! <gasps> <laughs> oh, dear, the ram's loose. <laughs> That's not the only one. <laughs> 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 